thanks for staying with us right here on uh, Sunrise as we continue this uh, morning. Now, food and product manufacturers have a responsibility to make sure that everything they provide to consumers are safe and adhere to consumer laws. An example of this can be seen with uh, the recent outbreak of listeriosis, uh, where many food products such as rations, polony, and different sorts of, uh, of, of cold meats had to be recalled uh, for causing uh, the death of more than 100 people. Now, March is marked as a consumer rights month and uh, which aims uh, to protect all consumers and to make sure that they are not exploited and to provide transparency regarding uh, the practices that manufacturers uh, partake in. Joining us in studio to discuss this, we are joined by Fati Menamela. He is uh, the Chief uh, Director of Consumer Affairs and Business Compliance in the Gauteng Department of Economic Development. Remember, you can be part of our conversation by giving us a call on 11 Seven four two or one six two zero. Your comments are also welcome on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, good morning to you, Sen. Thanks for joining us uh, this uh, morning. Good morning. Um, thanks. Let's. Uh, w what are the key learnings uh, from uh, this uh, recent um, outbreak of like recalling of food, um, amongst other things, in terms of for, for consumers? Yeah, I think the key learnings that came out of this uh, recent outbreak of listeriosis. I think relates to product safety and how vigilant uh, consumers should be uh, with regards to the products that they actually consume. Um, it actually is something that you know starts from just a mere, you know, expiry date on a on a, you know, a, a product. Product, you mm. know, can of milk or a bottle of cold drink and all that. Uh, that consumers should be aware of, of their rights and they should also be, you know, aware that there are bodies that have been established to actually sort of, you know, protect them and, and exercise that responsibility also of, you know, some kind of, you know, getting involved in some help, self-help groups, you know, where people actually generally are aware of what is actually happening around them especially with regards to, you know, products that they actually consume mm. um, and, and products that they generally actually use, you know, in their, in their, in their daily lives. It could be electrical elements, it could be motor vehicles. Um, with the recent uh, outbreak of listeriosis, it, it generally, in most instances, could also relate to food. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a right that is enshrined in the you know, in the Constitution, in the Consumer Protection Act and mm. other, you know, related laws that seek to actually, um, you know, protect the rights and interests of the consumers. But it Okay, we've seen a lot of violation re mm. violations of just uh, consumers' rights, uh, you know, from food products to cars, as you already mentioned, but to also just like industries, you know, colluding and fixing prices and, and things like that. But the effect of that besides just them getting like a slap on the wrist where they have to pay lots of money and things like that is it really b felt by consumers do the consumers benefit after the, you know these companies have been brought to book well not much and and i think you you're referring to some competition related issues mm. um if i were to refer back to an incident that you know was um i think um um, was before the com com uh, competition commission or mm. competition, you know, tribunal that related to the bread cartel. You remember, mm. uh, where um, huge fines were actually imposed on the parties that were involved in, you know, uncompetitive, you know, conduct, uh, where fines were also, you know, um, imposed. But now, only to find that the, the money actually always gets paid to the fiscus, mm. to the to the to the uh, National Revenue Fund. Um, it would have been, you know, so good if that was actually plowed back into the pockets, you know, of consumers. Mm. Um, another typical example is cases that the National Consumer Tribunal, you know, adjudicate, uh, where penalties also are, are being imposed, and only to find that, you know, if, if a party that has been found to have you know, in, involved or engaged in prohibited conduct, mm. gets fined, you know, huge amounts of money, but the money gets paid to the national fiscals. Um, we, we hope that the laws would actually change as, as we go along, 
uh, and then hopefully uh, in the future there will be instances where those monies actually get back into the pockets of, of, consumers. of the consumers because it's, it's quite unfair it's 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 you know prohibited conduct that should not have actually happened but but it, it did actually happen mm. Mm. all right so uh, back to the uh, as a food conversation so we've seen a lot of like second we know that there's a lot of second-hand goods that actually end up in the hands of, of consumers ending mm. up on uh, household uh, tables when it comes to situations like that uh, how should consumers deal with it? Because they are buying these products because it is available. Someone is, 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 is selling them. Well, consumers should look into quite a number of things, you know, pertaining to, you know, guarantees, you know, warranties, you know, whether the product, you may have bought it, you know, brand new mm. or secondhand or, or as, as, as used, you know, goods. Does it really, you know, perform you know the function for which you had purchased it because mm -hmm. you don't buy stuff just to you know for the sake of for the sake of buying it if you buy a motor vehicle whether it's brand new or it's second and you buy it so that it must you know perform the function of a motor vehicle starting mm -hmm. in the morning driving not breaking down and all that but uh, uh, in the same breath the 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 provider or the supplier of those services should play open cards you know consumers should take responsibility to, to, to make sure that the car is in good condition. Mm. But, but also the supplier must actually disclose, you know, certain defects that may actually, you know, um, appear in the, in the vehicle. If he is or, or if she is aware of those kind of defects, it could be a, a brand new car, it could be a second hand car. You must disclose so that there, there must be some kind of equal bargaining power in respect of the commodity that, you know, is a subject matter of that kind of, of a transaction. All so, right. Mm. We're also taking uh, your calls this morning on 011-447-1742 or 011 1620 All right, so in terms of, um, like, uh, market abuses or injustices that have been happening in the consumer market, what are some of the most frequent things or what are the trends saying? What have you been seeing happening over and over again in, in that area? You know, we have seen a lot of... And uh, it cuts across, you know, all the provinces and, and probably also at the National Consumer Commission. We have seen a lot of, you know, um, unfair practices, you know, in respect of the sale of second-hand motor vehicles. Mm -hmm. I think that is massive. That is huge. Mm. Um, we have been involved in, you know, certain, um, you know, campaigns of trying to, you know, to do uh, compliance monitoring you know, target certain areas that we know uh, are, are well known to be selling, you know, cars that are not really in good condition. Mm. Um, and precisely because maybe the suppliers of those goods are not aware or, or they just, you know, flout, you know, uh, uh, the, the laws that are there that mm. seek to actually pro pro I mean, uh, protect consumers. Mm. They, they do not know or they become ignorant of, you know, certain responsibilities that they actually have got to exercise as, you know, uh, uh, dealers in those kind of, of commodities. I.e., if you, if you get involved in some kind of credit agreement, there are certain things that you actually have got to disclose. You know, your pre-agreement, you know, um, uh, uh, documents, your, your, your quotation and, and all those things. You have to guarantee that this car could actually drive for close to 60,000 kilometers. Mm. And, and that is commensurate to the amount of money that you may have actually paid. You also, you know, have, you know, the, the right to have, you know, guarantee on the repairs that have been effected on the motor vehicle. Mm. And they should also know that if, if the consumer is not happy, the car doesn't perform the function for which it was, it was actually purchased, that vehicle must either be um, uh, replaced or there must be a refund or, or the, it must actually be repaired. Uh, so uh, obviously, in this case, a, lo a lot of uh, people who are selling the cars are taking advantage of the, the consumers and, and not. F yes, I, I think I think they are taking advantage. They they probably know what is actually happening in the in the in the whole scheme of things, but I think they are just taking, you know, advantage of consumers. Um, I mean, you you find instances where uh, a vehicle is sold to a, to to somebody else and the the gearbox is faulty. Mm. You know? I mean, that could actually you know cause a huge you know, injury or, 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 or harm to the consumer if, you know, you sell that kind of a vehicle. All right, let's uh, take a caller. We've got uh, Musa from Limpopo. Hello, Musa. Hello, how are you doing? Good, and yourself? I'm fine. Uh, I've always had these two concerns about uh, consumer rights when it comes to, for instance, the, the first one is 
you find that sometimes, like in the case, you know, when, when GM was being liquidated in South Africa, mm -hmm. you find that a, a, a company is liquidated or is about to liquidate, but it continues to sell things uh, to the public. What I wanted to know is, is, is it not in breach of consumer rights because uh, in, after the, the product is sold, who is going to back it up? Okay. Because they are, they are being liquidated. That is, that is my first one. And then the second one is I want to know uh, what are the consumer rights when, in a case when I, I, I want to return a product and then you, you find that we're having a, a difficulty. Say I buy something from, from a, a shop, a, call it Musa's shop, and then uh, I want to return it and then you find that I'm having difficulties when I get there. They don't want to take the product. They, uh, it's, um, this is electronics, what, what, and what, what. I okay. wanted to know what is my position there. What what should I do? Okay. This is my second question. All right. Thanks. Thanks for the call, uh, Musa. Well, Musa, you know, let me start with the second one. You you have the right to return products that are not satisfied with for as long as it is within six months of the defect actually appearing on the product that you may have actually purchased brand new from 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 a supply of I mean uh, uh, goods and and, and services. Mm -hmm. um, th there is no. Um, excuse, you know, from suppliers to refuse you or to refuse to actually refund or replace or, or, or repair a product that you're not happy about. In fact, um, you, you have a choice, you know, of the three uh, uh, rights that you have. Okay. Um, uh, and you, you have to stick to one that you, if you want the replacement, it must be a replacement. If you want the refund, you, mu you must be refunded. If it's a, if it's a repair, it should actually be repaired. Okay. Whatever choice that you make in respect of a product that you're not happy about, the supplier must actually make good of okay. that. Okay, so I'm just going to take one caller and then you'll still answer a, a Musa's uh, first question. Okay, uh, Temba, can you just uh, make your question very short? We, we, we're out of time. Yes, ma'am. In okay. short, I bought, a car, I bought a car from this big company, yeah. a new one, in 2015. Then in 2015 October and in January it, it gave me a problem. It blocked and stuck on the road. A brand new car. And then I went it. I, I put it. I, 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 I returned it. Then ever since then, ever since then it has been giving me a problem. And now the the company the the, the dealer that has given me the car it says now after the warranty now I'll be liable to pay that to pay the repairs of that car. It has never moved. Okay. A brand new car. What can I do? I wanted a replacement. Instead, they saying I should trade it in or rebuy another car. Okay. Musa, I'll suggest you come to the office. If you are a resident in Johannes, I mean in Gauteng, please come to the office. We are at 56 uh, Ilof Street. Uh, we will scrutinize all the papers that you have and try to investigate as to what could have actually happened. Remember, we, we also have got the responsibility to hear the other side of the story. Okay. I cannot outrightly say you are you are right or wrong, but please do visit us at 56 Okay, so uh, this, is, this is what Temba must do, come to 56 Elaf Street. Yeah. Okay, in terms of Musa's uh, first Yeah, uh, you know, businesses that, you know, Claim liquidated. to have been liquidated, yeah. and then the next thing they pop up somewhere, and all that. I think I think you have to check with the CIPC, and uh, which is the, the Register of Companies and Close Corporations. Uh, just do some kind of of a company search in respect of whether they are still trading. Uh, you could actually because liquidations actually get published in the newspapers and probably in the in the government gazette. Okay. Check with the uh, relevant liquidators within the area where the company was actually trading, just to make sure if it was actually liquidated because half the time you find that you know they claim to be liquidated only to pop up somewhere else with somebody else you know